What happens in the event that your employer gives you a notice for a disciplinary hearing? Uh, my name is Nkulimbele and I'm about to get you labor smart. Welcome to my channel. So in the event that your employer serves you with a notice for you to attend your disciplinary hearing, do you personally feel that you know all your rights? So in the event that your employer gives you a notice, um, there are certain steps that you might have to take in order for you to actually be on a good side of this disciplinary hearing. Um, there are two instances, or maybe three, where you might be in the line where you get this notice for a disciplinary hearing. First and foremost, it might be due to your conduct. Um, this will simply mean that you are in breach of your employment contract and then you have to be disciplined for your misconduct. Secondly, um, it will be due to your capability to perform your duties. This will give your employer the chance to criticize your capabilities to perform your duties effortlessly and effectively in the workplace. Um, so I want you guys to be fully aware of the reasons why you might be invited to a disciplinary hearing. Um, once you've gotten this disciplinary hearing, it is important for you to realize or to look out for what is stipulated in this notice. First and foremost, your employer will have to stipulate the accusations they have against you. Now, when we talk about accusations, this is simply why the reasons why you are invited to this disciplinary hearing. Secondly, they will have to stipulate the time and date of the disciplinary hearing. Thirdly, they will have to include um, the disciplinary breakdown, the disciplinary process breakdown rather, and how it is going to go hand in hand. And it is also very, very important for them to include in that notice that you are allowed to have a representative with you during that disciplinary hearing. Okay, so now once you have outlined everything that is in that notice, it is important for you to know exactly what needs to be in there in order for you to see whether or not your employer has included everything and the notice is procedurally correct. Because once it is not correct, on that basis alone, it will be unfair to continue with the disciplinary hearing. Okay, so... Now that you have outlined or you have went through that notice that you have been given, um, it is important for your employer to give you at least 24 hours for you to prepare for your um, disciplinary hearing. If it happens that you feel that 24 hours is not sufficient for you to get all the evidence that you need to plead your case, you are entitled to ask for a reschedule. Um, you may ask your employer to give you a couple more days in order for you to be prepared and to gather all your evidence for this disciplinary hearing. This is one thing that a lot of employees are not aware of. And oftentimes when we are given this notice, our emotions are high and they end up clouding our judgment. So it's always advisable for one to ask for an extension so that our emotions can be calm when we step into this disciplinary hearing. Secondly, once now you are seated in this disciplinary hearing, um, you are going to be given the opportunity to state your case. And when you are now stating your case, the time that you have used to prepare, um, this is where you gather your information. And during this process or during this session, this is the time where you are also capable of asking your employer questions. So it's important for you to really, really go home and prepare not only your evidence, but also the questions that might help you in this instance. So once that is done, you present your evidence and given the opportunity the person that is there to represent you may also contribute. Now, you, ha you might have two people who might be your representative, right? 
if it happens that you are part of a trade union, remember good people that you pay these people on a monthly basis. So it is important for you to use your union rep. It is advisable for you to use your union rep because they have training in this regard and they can assist you with anything that you might not even know. Um, if it happens that you are not part of a trade union, it is advisable for you to ask one of your colleagues, um, good people, just to be honest, sometimes our colleagues are the ones that are sabotaging us in the workplace. So I advise that you be very, very careful of the person you choose to come and represent you. Let that person be someone who can fully understand your situation and who has good intentions for you as an individual. The one thing that I always remind people is that oftentimes we do not have friends in the workplace, but just choose someone that you trust and who also trusts you as an individual or as a colleague. Um, they will also be given an opportunity pre to present some evidence um, depending on how the hearing goes. Um, remember that also, too many times we want to record conversations um, because of the Poppy Act. We cannot do that without the consent of the next person. So bear in mind that if ever you think you have evidence that you have recorded without the next person's consent, it will not hold during this disciplinary hearing. Once you have presented your evidence and your employer has also presented theirs, um, first they will do that and then you will present yours. But once that is done, um, your employer will write the verdict in writing. Um, and the one thing that people do not know is that you have the opportunity to oppose that or to appeal rather the decision that is made during this disciplinary hearing, um, depending on what reasons you have. Good people, it is very, very important for us to know our rights, especially when we step into a disciplinary hearing. I advise that you go through your contract, you go through your collective agreements you have with your employer. I advise that you also go through the Labor Relations Act so that you know exactly what your rights are as an employee. Till we meet again next time, goodbye.